Today, we're going to talk about how to use the location of an IP address inside of FortiGate to enforce policies. I'm Greg Abite, and I talk all things network and security. We'll be using my FortiGate 60th running FortiOS 7.4.3. That's not something I would recommend you use in production, but I'm in a lab environment. If you've got questions on which FortiOS you should be running, go check out my video talking about that subject. I'll have all the links to any relevant documentation, uh, and all the information that we're talking about today down below. So if you want to find that, it's down there. Lastly, a quick disclaimer, everything in this video is my own opinion and uh, just for informational purposes. So do your research. So how do we know where somebody is based on their IP address? There's a lot of different databases out there that have effectively the registered information about that IP address or the block of IP addresses that says where physically that IP is supposed to live. It is not 100% accurate all of the time. It needs to be constantly updated. Uh, so that's why this is something that kind of updates in the background of your FortiGate. The term in Fortinet is going to be geography address, uh, but you might hear me say GeoIP or geoblocking. Uh, those are all common terms that I hear used around this as well. Really what we're trying to do is to take the location or country of an IP address and try to determine whether or not we want them to get access based on that IP address. Now, I wouldn't solely rely on this as a mechanism, but it might help to weed out some of the noise. So that way, uh, initially, I'm going to weed out some countries that I don't expect my users to be in. Uh, or I might take the country that I expect them to be in and say that that is the only thing that is allowed and allow everything else to fall down to the implicit deny. So looking here inside of my address table, I've got the type filter to geography and we see that there's no results. So why is that? Um, just honestly, in my opinion, I think that this is likely just a choice in order to minimize how much uh, your address table fills up and it uh, gets really clumsy when there's so much information in there. Uh, so it's quick and easy to create an address. Uh, so we're just gonna go hit create new. Let's go USA. We'll change from subnet down to geography and change the country to United. So if we hit OK, re-enable that filter, there we go. We see we have the USA up there. Um, so it's quick and easy to create, uh, but there are a lot of different countries in here. So depending on what you really need, uh, you might not want to have to manually create all of those. And I'll go over that in a little bit. All right, so the first use case we're going to go over here is adding in a filter for your SSL VPN, uh, just to restrict it only to these USA uh, users. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, there's still plenty of malicious actors that source themselves from the US uh, because this is such a simple filter, but this is at least going to weed out a lot of the noise. So if we go down to VPN, SSL VPN settings, I've actually got mine turned off, so we'll just turn it on for this demo here. Uh, and then we'll go down to this restrict access and go from allow access from any host to limit access to specific hosts. So I can change this host from all to just include the USA. So if I do that right now and apply it, it's going to say only IP addresses from the United States are going to be allowed to get access to my SSL VPN. We've got other measures like authentication and MFA that can help out with that, but that's an option. Maybe you've got a larger company that uh, has multiple locations. So you can add in multiple countries in here. You would just need to create each of those different countries. Uh, if you've got a big enough company uh, that's widespread enough, it might actually be easier to do the opposite instead of saying which countries I'll allow you to come from. I want to say which countries I don't want to allow you to come from. In that case, we can actually go and hit this negate source. Uh, so that is going to say anything that is not from the United States right now. Um, so you could add in, if there's just a couple different countries that you don't want to have access in, you could have that blocked there. Another thing I will see people do a lot is going to be uh, creating what I'll refer to as a header policy. So something I'm just gonna put at the very top that I'll just kind of keep there at all times. It's likely not gonna change very often. Uh, so we'll just say, block countries and it doesn't matter where it's coming from or going to, but I don't want it to be sourced from. And again, I don't have uh, all the countries in here, so I'm just gonna quick create a new address, G 
geography. Find China. Hit OK, and it'll ask us if we want to add that. I do. And maybe I'll add in also Russia. And I'll add that as well. So we can just say, I don't care where you're going to. I just don't want you to be coming from China or Russia uh, and on any service. Again, this is highly dependent on how your business is doing things, um, but that might be a basic step in the right direction. But maybe you know that there's nothing that should be coming from China or Russia, so you just wanna block that automatically. Again, this is to help uh, filter out a lot of the noise. So I might not even turn on logging violation traffic here uh, just so that I don't have to deal with that um, adding additional noise into my logs when I'm troubleshooting something. I'll hit OK. And then again, because it's a header, we're going to drag it from the bottom all the way to the very top. Just before anything else, let's already filter out China and Russia. So you might be looking at this and thinking that's great, but I actually want to do the opposite of this. Where's the negate source like we had in the SSL VPN? So that's actually going to be something you can do via the CLI or with some additional feature visibility. So if we go over and click edit in CLI, so I'll look at this and we'll set source address gate enable. And that's how we would uh, flip the source address. So you might choose. I only want to block things that are not coming from the United States. And so you don't have to list every single country to block from other countries. So if I want to do this in the GUI, uh, don't want to go into the CLI, um, I can also go to feature visibility and we can go look at the policy advanced options. So we'll select that on and apply it. So if we go back to the firewall policy we were talking about earlier, I can now see that there is a negate source option within here and we'll see that big exclamation point pop up again. Now you may have enough information about different areas and what you expect from different countries that you do want to have effectively every single country pre-created. So you don't have to go and manually create that every time that you want to filter based on that country. So uh, I've already created this uh, quick little script here to just make every single country based on the information in the FortiGate. So I'm going to copy this and we're just going to throw it inside of the CLI here. And there we go. If we go back to addresses, we can now see we have all the different addresses from the different geographies. So I know there's a few different scripts floating out there right now. Um, I've just added mine out there as well. Uh, I'm probably not going to keep it up to date constantly. Uh, I'd really recommend you focus on what's appropriate for you um, and what countries are available there. I did notice that there were a few different scripts out there that were missing some countries. So the way that I was doing this was actually to go in config firewall address, and I'll just go edit the USA that I created earlier. And it's already set to geography address. Um, so we're going to say set country, and then I'm just going to hit question mark here, and it's going to list out all the different countries and their country codes. So once I had all of that information, uh, I am a huge Excel nerd. Uh, so I actually uh, put all this information into an Excel spreadsheet. Quick one, text to column. Like this right here, finish. So now I've got two different areas here, and then I'll just quick steal this that I used. So this effectively just says to edit and then the country's name, set the type geography, and then set the country to the country code. So I can paste that down, set that up. Then the only thing I need to add inside of here is going to be config firewall address. And 
at the very end. End. So I'll copy all that. If I copy that into a notepad, it actually copies in a whole bunch of quotes around stuff. So first I need to pump it into a Word document, which will help me get rid of that. Now, if I paste it in there, it's not there. So if you're ever looking to make an updated one based on things, that's technically the best way to go about it. Uh, but most of the things that are out there, uh, we're only missing one or two countries and probably a small obscure country that you're maybe not really keying in on. All right, that was a quick look at how to use geography addresses within a FortiGate to help you block or allow traffic based on their location. This is not a completely exhaustive list. There are more advanced features and different things that you can do, but I want to cover the most common use cases today. If you'd like to follow me or support me, there's links down below and how to do that. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.